uh, how the system works. Um, so there's no sales aspect to this. It's really just to give you guys a bit of an insight as to you know, how we've used the new fleet, the uh, Visage system and you know, how it's worked for us and the results we're getting. Uh, Luke also told me if I didn't do this, I'd have to pay for my trip. <laughs> <laughs> so what I thought would be most beneficial is just to, you know, I know you guys, like me, we get hit with stats and figures, reports about this, that and everything. Um, this is genuinely what we've actually been able to achieve at Twin Creeks and you know, we pride ourselves, uh, my team, I'm fortunate to have a really good team and some uh, great supporters of new technology within our, uh, within our staff and how we've been able to apply this uh, to our operation. Um, currently, just to give you a bit of background, um, Twin Creeks, we're seven years old now. Uh, we're at 850 acre estate, which is basically a, a prestige residential estate and golf course and country club. Uh, we've got 60 uh, club cart precedents in our fleet. Uh, hopefully looking to expand this to probably about 84 within the next, or well, in the short to medium term. Uh, we've got the Bev cart, the Cafe Express, which uh, well, Luke knows we pimped out a little bit just to tidy it up, make it uh, nice and flashy. Um, you know, we, and we've put all the Visage system in, so all the carts, the entire fleet's got the computer systems, the clubhouse is fully wireless uh, for the actual setup of it. Um, I basically looked at, when we were looking at the technology, looked around at a number of other uh, you know, manufacturers, uh, both in the golf cart, uh, specific manufacturers, but also the peripheral technology that was coming out from some other companies. Um, you know, and, and the Visage system to me looked like it was one that was going to be most practical for us. Um, so I look at it from two perspectives. There's our players' perspective. So we're a private members club, but we do encourage our members uh, to bring out guests. We have some short periods where we do allow visitor play to come out, and we do a lot of corporate golf as well. Um, so I look at it from the player's perspective, but also from the business perspective, the operating um, operations perspective. To be honest, 30% of it um, is realistically for the players. Doesn't seem like a lot, um, but our players now have got GPS, and I think it's one of, you know, congratulations to the guys, I think it's one of the best <laughs> GPS systems out there. It's very user friendly. Um, they've got the scorecard facility. Uh, they've got a food ordering option. Uh, they've got a direct communication channel back to our golf department. Um, for our corporate golf, we took an upgrade option on the scoreboard and went for the Viper system. So we got a live leaderboard for our corporate days. Um, the flyovers, um, when you actually see the flyovers, I mean, it is a European and American system. We don't have that many pine trees, but it's obviously the standard default for their uh, <laughs> flyover graphics. Um, from a safety perspective, I know a lot of guys have got like Medic Alert type systems and you know, they are quite expensive. It's something that we haven't been able to afford, but through this system, you know, we've now got direct communication with the cart. So if there is a medical emergency, you know, the players can basically just click two buttons and they've got a message through to, uh, through to the golf shop and, to, and through to management. Um, there's also weather alerts too. Um, our, our golf course is over 350 acres. Um, so to be able to communicate with them quickly uh, if we've got pending lightning storms or something coming through, um, this system allows us to do that pretty efficiently. <coughs> so from a player's perspective, um, that's what our members have picked up. Um, I'll get to the costing side of how we've actually charged it out and how we've uh, implemented it uh, in a minute. But from an operational point of view, I, you know, I'm sure you guys have been through the system and you've got a bit of an understanding for it, but I've just sort of noted the major major areas that have worked for us. The action zones, the ability to shut down our golf course in areas where we don't want golf carts to go is almost a little bit scary. Um, you know, it's literally four clicks of a button on a mouse and upload and you can shut down an area on the golf course and the carts can't get in there. Um, you know, for the application of that, protecting our ground under repair or if we've got any course maintenance work, uh, it's extremely appro appropriate for that. Um, protecting the actual damage to, the, to our fleet. Um, you guys know that you, know, you break something on them, they're not cheap to repair. The ability for us to stop, especially on corporate golf days or visitors where they think they're four wheel drive and they can go anywhere. Um, you know, with this system, you can't. You know, it shuts them down, they can't move. 
Um, and also, you know, something that my course superintendent brought to my attention, and he's already starting to notice, and something you probably don't consider, but driving carts, especially on our layout, off into surrounding scrub, picking up past balum seeds, bringing that back onto the golf course, doesn't happen for us as much anymore. Um, so, I mean, to cost that out, we don't quite know yet, but it's only an improvement, and we're not seeing the spread of weeds as much as we have in previous times. <coughs> the tournament function, um, look, it's something that we, we're probably only just really scratching the surface of what we can actually do with it. Um, I mean, Brad, you guys do a similar job to us, you know, and a great job commend your staff where you come up to the cart, you've got a cart sign that says who's playing, what hole, corporate logos. With this system now, we can actually do that from one of the desks down in the administration department and it takes us about 30 seconds. Um, it uploads to the cart, takes about two minutes. So there's cost savings in there as well. Um, most of you guys have been in the golf industry for long enough and worked in golf operations. The competition scoring system, it's all automatic. So you literally just set up your competition, hit print, and you've got all your leaders, or all your results for that competition. So the time saving there has been fantastic. The diagnostics on the, uh, in the back of house when you learn how to use it, um, on the actual fleets, I mean, we can tell how many hours, what satellites it's bouncing off. Um, you know, we can probably tell the last time that it was a full charge, the battery levels. There's so much information in there, you literally can't use it all. But it gives you the ability to know exactly what's going on with which carts, recurring problems. You know, it's a step above anything I've seen before. Um, food ordering. When we actually looked at the system, to be honest, Food ordering wasn't something I even contemplated. Um, not sure if you're aware, but they've got a facility built into it where you can preload a menu, you can specify what holes it actually shows up on, um, and as the players drive into that zone, the menu will pop up, they can order from it, it's literally just tap and go. Uh, they hit confirm, that prints out in our bar in the clubhouse, and then they can pick it up. We've timed it, so it's 15 to 20 minutes to drive from where they can order from back to the clubhouse. Now at Twin Creeks, we actually offer drive-through. 25% um, of our orders are coming off the 18th hole. Um, the remainder are coming off the 9th hole, so people eating halfway. Average order spend is $18 per person. Um, you guys that are here, if you've got Bev Karch, you know $18 per person is a pretty tidy figure to be picking up. Um, interesting thing is the main ordering times are between 1 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so it's people, in my opinion, that we wouldn't be getting a food and beverage spend out of normally. Um, we're, we're forecasting at the moment, based off our initial figures, that we're going to get 10% around we'll actually order um, from this feature. And to put a dollar value to that, we're looking at about $65,000. Um, one of the things I checked when I was initially looking, on all these figures you just literally run reports out of the system, it's quite user friendly. One of the things I looked at was our on-course bev cart, the spend's actually gone up over the same period. So it's not detracting from sales from that. Our restaurant sales was the other thing I contemplated, and they've actually gone up for the same period as well. So at the moment, it looks like we're picking up additional business. You know, everyone's in the same boat. Trying to get more players to your golf course is critical, but making sure you get the maximum spend out of them whilst you're there, to me, is a pretty critical strategy. Um, we don't look to, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Um, we don't look to sting our players, so it's not a case of charging them twice as much as probably what it's worth. It's more about giving them an opportunity to spend more on more things whilst they're with us. Um, one of the other things, so the food, sorry, the food ordering side of things has been a pleasant surprise, um, but definitely a, from a dollar value point of view. Um, I can pretty much justify the system cost just off that. Database email capture. Again, not something that we'd actually considered when we were looking at the system. Um, at the moment, we're averaging between 40 and 50 emails per month, where when they, to explain, when you play and you use a scorecard, on the last hole, it actually pops up with an option that you can email the scorecard to yourself. So you can actually get a copy of your scorecard. The system actually captures that email, and then we can download that into our database. 
Um, you know, for most of us, we're all aware of the fact that he, with the biggest database, wins. Um, the ability to send out further promotional opportunities to that database is pretty critical. So growing the database is a pretty important focus for us. <coughs> At the moment, we're forecasting based off the numbers we're getting and conservative projections. We're looking at you know, roughly somewhere around 4,000 email or additional contacts in our database just based off that system. Um, it gives us the ability, like I said, to send out return visit promos, um, but also you know, simple things for you know, a thank you email to go out to them to thank them for playing at Twin Creeks. Um, you know, we're all the same. You know, those little touches make a big difference. Um, and it's literally just a couple of clicks of the button for us to be able to do that. Um, there's also, from an operational point of view, the benefit of the player management or the field management. Um, I, I did it for the sake of uh, this presentation, just to get some facts and figures to be able to add to. Um, you can go through at any point in time and get your pace of play per hole, per player, per group, you know, it's probably per shoe size if you really want to go into it. There's that much detail in there, it's ridiculous. Um, but I know from our April results, when I ran this report, 60% of our rounds were ahead of time. 25% um, were on time, and 15% were behind time. So you can break it down by month, or you can do it by day, or you can do it by week, and you actually dial in and see where the problems are. Can you send the messages like live? Yes. Like, yeah, I'm about, I'm about to go into oh, that. Sorry, no, you're right. Um, my golf ops department, I've got some great young guys in there. And to give you, I told a couple of guys today, to give you a good example, uh, about, three, about three weekends um, after we put the system in, uh, I was in the shop on a Saturday morning. One of the golf guys gets a phone call. It's one of our members on the, I think it was the fourth or fifth hole. And she was bitching and whinging. Uh, because the group in front was slow. Yeah, we do open comps on the weekend. We're very open-minded. <laughs> um, my head professional went straight to the computer, worked out what cart she was in, looked at the group in front, was able to tell that they were actually six minutes ahead of time. Went, he'd put her on hold whilst he was doing that. Goes back to her, explained to her, I won't say her name, explain to her, the group in front is actually six minutes ahead of time. You should focus on your own game and think about golf rather than someone else. <laughs> Hung the phone up, turned to me and he said, I don't give a shit what the system costs, it's worth it. <laughs> so the ability to pick up that sort of information we would never have had before. Um, you know, as Joe was asking, at any point in time we can see where any of our carts are on our property. Um, you know, the ability to and the way it works is they, they flag it when they're 10% behind of time and then 20%. Um, and it literally just changes colour and starts blinking and making uh, noises at you. Our golf, shops, golf shop staff now will actually send them a message um, to say speed up your X number of minutes behind time and they can actually monitor them. The other thing is, I don't know whether everybody does it or how they do it, but we do a course marshal on our members' comp days <coughs> Obviously, when you're looking at labour costs, um, you know, for any of Sorry? Yeah, he's got a tree that I know he likes sleeping under. Um, he's actually no longer got a job. Because what we've done now is we can isolate, you know, well ahead of time. You can monitor which groups are fast or slow. And you can actually send a, a staff member directly to that, that group or a couple of groups to speed them up. So I extrapolated some figures out just for this, uh, for this particular example. I, I'm forecasting we'll probably save close to $25,000 this year on course marshalling labour costs, because we just don't need them. You know, if, you're out, if all the carts are out there and they're all tracking ahead of time, why have a course marshal out there? <coughs> the one intention uh, that I originally had, and I explained to Luke, um, I know the US you know, when they first pitched the product, it was along the lines of, you know, if you increase by, I don't know what it is, $1.80 or $2 a round, you can cover the cost of the system for the cart hire. So for us, $20 goes to $22. Yeah, look, I think there's a lot of merit to that. But from my point of view, 
I've got members that reckon if they pay $20 a year for a seven day membership, it's too much. Um, trying to give them a value add um, to improve the perception that their membership is well, well and truly worth it was one of the major boxes I was looking to tick. So what I actually worked out from the system is we, we've gone after advertising. Um, we previously have never allowed advertising on the golf course because of branding reasons. Um, having billboards up is not something we want to have at Twin Creek. I'm not saying that other courses shouldn't do that, it's just not in line with our brand.